Welcome to Think Tech on Spectrum OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. In our show this time, we'll visit the annual Geek Meet on Magic Island at Ala Moana Beach Park. There were hundreds of fun-loving geeks and interesting booths and exhibits there on a beautiful Sunday afternoon. The Hawaii Geek Meet is a fun, casual, family-friendly, social, and science gathering for people who are curious and have a passion they love to share. The Hawaii geeks have a very inclusive definition of the word geek. That definition includes gadget lovers, coders, designers, makers, artists, and much more. As they like to say, everyone is a geek about something. The first Hawaii Geek Meet was held in April 2008, kicking off a decade of family-friendly outdoor celebration of all things geek. As it has evolved, the annual Hawaii Geek Meet is literally a grassroots gathering for creative and curious people of all ages. The Geek Meet this year was held on the Magic Island lawn adjacent to the lantern ceremony at Ala Moana Beach Park, and we could see that the preparations for the ceremony were going strong. the invitation of the Geek Meets chief geek and organizer, Ryan Ozawa, famed co-host of Bite Marks Cafe on Hawaii Public Radio. And of course, he was there. It's barely controlled chaos. It's a uh, geek village that rises up in the summer once a year. This is our 12th annual event, and basically it's a celebration of all things geeky. And these days, that is so all-encompassing and inclusive that pretty much anything qualifies. So everybody from uh, actual scientists who do astronomy and hard science to esports gamers to cosplayers, uh, I can't even run down the list, it's so long. It's a free event and I'm actually grateful for every organization that comes and has to haul all of their stuff here to the middle of the park. It was a beautiful sunshiny day and the geeks were out in force. So as we always do, we walked the lawn and checked out the various fun and zany geek booths and exhibits. In fact, we said hi to a number of geeks at the meet. We learned a lot about what they were doing in their projects 
And as always, we enjoyed their enthusiasm, creativity, and good nature. We're here with parents and children together talking about our Makery program. Uh, our Makery program is a, a free course that uh, we teach that teaches people um, some computer-rated drafting, some finishing, um, and designing. So uh, essentially what people do is they make, uh, we're able to create and design products uh, and then uh, have them for different kinds of events or to sell them to make their own business. We can do uh, very simple things like, so this is just a really quick puzzle that we were able to make. Um, these are some more advanced stuff like boxes. This was a centerpiece for a graduation last year, all the way up to something like this, which is our... That's my favorite for sure. So what this is is a puzzle uh, that this uh, woman just solved, uh, which is what is Hawaii's most valuable resource? And then you put the gears in place uh, to create the answer to solve the puzzle. Get them outside to look at all the different stuff. that She's interested in STEM, so she likes robotics and things like that. So I thought it would be cool to come down and to check it out. I'm owner and operator of Puzzle Company. Uh, I make games, toys, and wonders. It's a solar-powered lawnmower, among other things. Uh, it also has a winch, a tow ball, and I got some other attachments at home. There's a 3,000-watt inverter in there, so you can power your electric tools, your microwave, four 52-pound gel batteries in there, a uh, 90-watt panel on the top, and a backup alarm. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got a filter on the top to block out the majority of the of the sun's rays so that you don't get blinded if you look through it because you should never look at the sun directly. So we both work at the IFA together. Uh, John here is a postdoc, I'm a grad student. It's actually surprisingly light because it's mostly empty inside. Uh, the, the important expensive parts are of course the mirrors. So if you can imagine how much light we can collect from this, how much you can collect from something that's 30 meters diameter. You know, I know IFA is in capable of incredible things, but arranging the I'm sun on me. I'm a Menahuni. Yeah. I have amazing powers. A few weeks ago, we had uh, the open house, which is a yearly event. So there's all sorts of activities for uh, people of all ages. And but coming in later in the year, there's the uh, transit of Mercury. You'll get to see Mercury crossing the sun, the Gemini uh, meteor shower in December. So it's still quiet in the summer, but you can enjoy the sun in the meantime. It's pretty amazing. I, I can't wait to see the end result. It's going to be incredible once we get there. Uh, I think it might be delayed into next year or the one after that, but we'll see. We'll get there. I know with hard work and dedication, they can pull it off. We're here with the 501st Legion. Um, here to support the, um, the geek meet because we're fellow geeks. Come together, sharing knowledge and um, geekdom. <laughs> We have um, uh, some helmets here that are made by our members. Uh, we are an international uh, costuming group, and um, yeah, our, ma our members make um, our costumes by hand. We try to emulate the um, the quality, the same quality that's on the film, um, in person. It's got some actors in there, but this helmet, um, it came on the um, the day after my mom passed. So this is a, like an heirloom, if you will. So I've got friends, I've got all the members here in it. I've got, I do have some of the actors in there. So this is a real piece of of my life, my family. The uh, DLT-21 uh, uh, blaster, it's used by like our Navy troopers. Uh, you've seen some rebels may use it. You've got the very uh, iconic E-11 blasters, um, a gaffy stick, something used by the Tuscan Raiders or the Sand People uh, from A New Hope. And then you've got something from uh, Rogue One, which was the rocket launcher. So my call sign is uh, DZ64332, which is my ranking and my number affiliated with the 501st. To get back to the, the gaffy stick, which is a, a weapon used by the Tuscan Raiders, the origins in real life are, are from a Fijian Totokia war club, um, but it was modified in the Star Wars universe uh, to hold more of a spear-like appearance, and it was altered for the Star Wars universe, but it was based on uh, the real-life Fijian to Totokia war club. This is a BB-8 from Star Wars astromech droid from uh, Episode 7. So I made, I made it with a 3D printer, but I want, I want to make it more beautiful, more lighter weight and more movable. BB-8 Unit 
was made for the uh, the new movies, the episodes seven, eight, and nine. So just as kind of a companion to uh, get the kids uh, interested in it. And um, I think at the time it was really a um, it was a new and exciting model that nobody understood how it could work with uh, the body rolling and the head staying on top. And so. Uh, it took a lot of, but a lot of uh, geeks really got into it and tried to figure it out. So that was our original plan, is to make a moving model, but, um, and this is all Yusuke's work, but uh, it's a static model right now, so it has um, some sounds and lights. So we're advertising for Comic-Con Honolulu and Qui-Con. Comic-Con's coming up first week of August, and Qui-Con's uh, May next year. It's getting better every year. Bigger too. So we're trying to expand to like more floors, more events and stuff. So anyone that has any ideas can message us and we'll get you a panel. The first one that comes to mind is like a big one is um, if anyone watched Avengers Endgame it's, uh, or Avengers, it's um, the Red Skull. Um, so that actor's coming down and he's a really big draw. So I think a lot of people are excited to see him. Yeah, we have a lot of like comic authors and stuff like that too. It's a uh, pretty much a community event for all the people who love things geeky and video games, anything, comic books. Um, so it's just a place to gather, meet new friends, and do things that you enjoy. I'm Keith from Hawaii Saber Academy, and we're doing um, lightsaber combat. So we treat these polycarbonate blades as lightsabers, and uh, they don't light up that well in the daylight, but at night they're very bright and cool, and they look like lightsabers. I'm Alex. I'm with uh, the Skull of St. George. We're a medieval combat group here. Uh, there are so few around these days. Oh yeah, so few. Yeah. These here are fencing masks, like you would see in um, Olympic fencing. These offer the best protection for lightsaber combat. The, um, I forget the name of them, the, the mask for Kendo, those work as well. These are for, these are children's masks. Basically these, just for children. We use polycarbonate blades, like you Oh, like you heard Keith talking a little while ago. So all the lights are in the hilt here. So it's just, it, it lights up from down here and just lights up the whole blade. But after use, it just kind of dies out. I've been doing this for about three years. I started in 2016. I've actually just been knighted this year, week before last. Congratulations. Thank you. And got my own little commemorative lay. Very nice. Took me three years, but I did it. May the force be with you right here, as well. right now. This is Maka Fett, um, and we're doing a test run on his costume, and we're going to be still making adjustments to it. Um, we have ears, we're still at a work in progress. 
to make him a Tustin Raider and Bantha. So his costume is still in works. <laughs> so this folds up and I can pick it up and take it on the bus with me. I put it, put it kind of upright like this and uh, just take it with me anywhere. It has a motor in the front wheel uh, and it's lithium uh, powered. It's kind of the same model they use for the school, scooter rentals, but I own this one. And I use it as a kind of a micro mobility solution. I get about uh, 18 miles on one battery charge and it goes about 15, 16 miles an hour. And I usually get around Kakako and so I've removed a need for a car with it. Well, with electric bikes too, I mean, they don't count as bikes and it, this as well doesn't count as a bike, but it doesn't count as a moped because it doesn't go fast enough. So you don't have to register it. It's kind of in a weird sp sp place right now. I think they kind of got a bad rap when Lime tried to come here and they got kicked out. But most of those laws were related to uh, access, you know, sidewalk accessibility. So I, I definitely would like to see some more legislation on, on uh, these types of vehicles and where they can find a place alongside bicycles in Hawaii. And also for the batteries as well. We do have, an, you know, if we want to go towards uh, um, uh, eco-friendly vehicles and, and battery power, we got to be smarter about how we bring batteries into the island. Actually, we kind of brought out the, the big guns today. Um, but, um, I mean, just showing what, what the drone industry, you know, is capable of. Um, so, I mean, all the way from consumer level, all the way up to full-on professional, you know, Hollywood, all that stuff. The FAA is working on some rules to start allowing um, beyond line of sight capability. Um, so, I mean, we're monitoring that, seeing where that goes. Um, and, you know, in the future, it, it might be possible. Um, the drones themselves are, you know, are evolving. They're, the technology is getting better and better. Um, actually, just this past week, DJI, so the company that manufactures probably close to 80% of the market of drones that you see. Um, they just announced that they are incorporating an ADS-B system into all of their drones by 2020. ADS-B is an is anti-collision system that a lot of like passenger airliners use. And so the drones will have the same exact systems. So we're live streaming. So basically, uh, we have a Twitch channel called Hawaii Stream Team, uh -huh. and we all stream as a team uh -huh. on the channel. Ah. Yeah, we provide different content, even live streaming uh, at events, or want to do like hiking, or boating, or yeah. biking, or yeah. anything you can imagine. Yeah. We want to cover. Great. Yeah, so we, well, we want to bring Hawaii in a fun way online. We're using uh, 4G technology that allows us to bond and get a. A remote internet access. It's like uh, an encoder okay. that allows you to bond 4G okay. uh, and then broadcast it. I mean, and then we get to stream it live onto Twitch. Yeah. You can't oh, go wrong, yeah. right? Sagoy's yeah. uh, garlic chicken bento, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So this is what we had for our lunch today, you know, with a bottle of water, you know? Very healthy, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. yeah, yeah. HSTE stands for the uh, Hawaii Society of Technology and Education. So our focus is to bring educational technology to teachers and show them how to use this not just as a toy but rather as a, a tool to get concepts across. So all of the stuff that you see here is being used in classrooms by one of the three volunteers that came out today. Um, everything from a Piper kit that where students will actually put together the computer, run the computer and learn more about electronics. We're coding with the Dash and Dot robots. Uh, right now the kids are trying out music apps. Um, we have AR VR. So basically when you have the app you can create virtual augmentation on top of this. Um, we have our Harry Potter wand over here, our micro bits. So students are actually taking their digital creations, bringing them into the analog world, uh, into the form of the micro bit. Um, Bloxels for storytelling. Um, we range, so Hawaii Society of Education does a lot of professional development for teachers. And that's our focus, is to make sure that teachers are getting what they need. Mostly STEM, it's a, it's a wide range, STEM, computer science. Um, it could be something Google, uh, just teach them how to use Google tools, Certainly. make them more efficient at what they're doing. That's great Absolutely, stuff. Yeah. yeah. Things that you might not otherwise catch, you exactly. know, yes. help, help you fill in the yeah. blanks. And for the most part, we are a nonprofit, so we provide free PD, and uh, we do it for all islands, not just Oahu. Oh, Your success. I was a little too excited for that. <laughs> Well, with the Harry Potter wand, um, you can kind of 
work with it and almost have your own magic right here in the computer. But uh, in terms of like all technology in general, it, a lot of it is just having that mindset to kind of try things out. And you know, if you make mistakes, you make mistakes. But in the end, a lot of times like technology speaks for itself. And what we're seeing, I'm a teacher actually, and what we're seeing with kids is that they can do it. It's just we need to give them the access and we need to give them the opportunity. So this is, HISTI is like all about that. How do we give access to kids, but also to teachers? Because as teachers, we want to know, um, you know, how to bring it in in a, in a good way for kids. This is 100% uh, nail polish on a strip. So you have the top coat, color coat, base coat, and then an adhesive. And you just peel it off, press it onto your nail, and then you file off the excess. And then you have, um, nails that last up to 14 days and then you just remove them with nail polish remover like regular nail polish so what has changed uh, the technology is miniaturized it's uh, gotten better more durable easier to fly so uh, yeah I mean we started off as a drone racing league just for adults and now uh, we have a program that's been going for the last two years uh, as a stem program for kids on the high school and middle school level we typically have like a race every other weekend, um, but we are gearing up for Aero Season 3. Uh, that's Aero's a STEM program. So we have uh, the returnees coming back from last year, and we have middle schools now um, for Season 3. Middle schools, we had a couple this year just as an experiment, but um, there's definitely traction now. On a high school level, they build the big quads that go really fast. On the elementary and middle school level is uh, ducted quads that are micro like this and you know be fun to fly but not dangerous. It's the geek meet so um, I guess technically I am a bit of a geek so perfect place for me but also I'm here with the last outpost. Many clubs, community groups, companies and organizations were listed as supporters of the event. ThinkTech was proud to be listed too. Want to know more about the Geek Meet or Hawaii Geeks, or perhaps realize your own destiny as a geek? Check out hawaiigeek.com. And now let's check out our ThinkTech schedule of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts its talk shows live on the internet from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. on weekdays. Then we broadcast our earlier shows all night long and on the weekends. And some people listen to them all night long and on the weekends. If you missed a show or if you want to replay or share any of our shows, they're all archived on demand on ThinkTechHawaii.com and YouTube. For our audio stream, go to thinktechhawaii.com audio. 
and we post all our shows as podcasts on iTunes. Visit thinktechaway.com for our weekly calendar and live stream and YouTube links. Or better yet, sign up on our email list and get our daily email advisories. Think Tech has a high-tech green screen studio at Pioneer Plaza. If you want to see it or be part of our live audience, or if you want to participate in our shows, contact shows at thinktechhawaii.com. If you want to pose a question or make a comment during a show, call 808-374-2014 and help us raise public awareness on ThinkTech. Go ahead, give us a thumbs up on YouTube or send us a tweet at ThinkTechHI. We'd like to know how you feel about the issues and events that affect our lives in these islands and in this country. We want to stay in touch with you, and we'd like you to stay in touch with us. Let's think together. And now, here's this week's Think Tech commentary. Inherent in social justice is justice. Yes. The old-fashioned kind of justice, right? You know, mm -hmm. we have to be respectful of that. We always have to preserve that in this country. That's what, okay. in many ways, that's what this country is about. Mm -hmm. The Central Park Five, I didn't know about this, but there's a series about it. It's a really important series. For those who have not heard, it's called When They See Us when they see us on Netflix. So Ava DuVernay is the, I believe, director and producer along with Oprah Winfrey. And they talked about the Central Park Five who were famously accused of raping a woman in New York. And then they were later found to be innocent. Yeah. And so there's so many and lessons. And they spent some time in jail. And they spent like 13 years in jail. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember Donald Trump took out a full page ad to uh, convict them and throw them throw them in jail. So it's really hard for them to have spent time in jail. That's what that's what the story is about in the Central Park Five. It is. It talks it, it really goes into how there is such a huge need in our justice system and how if you look a certain way, if you act a certain way, or if you're at the wrong place in the wrong time, you can be accused of a crime that you did not commit and had nothing to do with. What troubled me the most, I think, were that these young boys were just that. They were young teenage boys, 13 years of their life gone. It's where terrible things happen in the law <laughs> and uh, people go to jail for things they didn't do. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it's, it's something we have to avoid. Our system of justice is, of course, sometimes it makes mistakes, but it's calculated to avoid this sort of result. And I think we have to take note when we find out that this kind of thing happened and redouble our efforts not to let it happen again. I believe if we all do our part that we will. Thank you, Keisha. Thank you. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of Think Tech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Okay, Cynthia, that wraps up this week's edition of Think Tech. Remember, you can watch Think Tech on Spectrum OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Cynthia does. For additional times, check out OC16.tv. For lots more Think Tech videos and for underwriting and sponsorship opportunities on Think Tech, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or a host, a producer or an intern, and help us reach and have an impact on Hawaii. Thanks so much for being part of our Think Tech family and for supporting our open discussion of tech, energy, diversification, and global awareness in Hawaii, including geekdom, and of course, the ongoing search for innovation wherever we can find it. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. I'm Jay Fidel. And I'm Cynthia Sinclair. Aloha, everyone. Mm -hmm.